Today, we're gonna to talk about four things to make life a little easier on your senior dog. Life with a senior dog is different than life with a young dog. Senior dogs have different ailments and different needs that can often make navigating the final years of their life and making them more comfortable a good bit challenging. So today I'm going to talk to you about four simple things that can make life a little bit easier on your senior dog, involving the brain and the body. If you like this type of video, please be sure to let me know by hitting that like button. Hit subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you can continue to receive updates when we post new videos. Doing that helps make videos like this possible. So if you'd like to see more, please hit those buttons. Now let's get right into it. The four things that we're gonna talk about today have to do with cognition, comfort, mobility, and wellness. Wellness being the first thing that we're gonna tackle. And for the wellness topic, I thought it was important to bring in an expert. So we went over to Baxter Veterinary Clinic where we talked with the senior owner there, Dr. Beatty, about the differences in the needs of senior dogs, as in coming in and out of the medical facilities, lab work, and just what their overall basic needs are that differ from that of young dogs. So I'm gonna show you guys the recording that we did with Dr. Beatty to give you a more in-depth look at why it's so important to tend to them differently when it comes to medical needs than you would otherwise with young dogs. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Beatty from Baxter Veterinary Clinic, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about the importance of twice yearly senior exams. So dogs and cats age a lot more quickly than people. Every year of their life could be anywhere from seven to 11 years of our lives. So you can imagine as they get older, things can start to change much more quickly inside their bodies. Some things are obvious and we can see them from the outside. You might see a growth um, or you might see changes in the eye coloration, some cloudiness. And some things can only be detected with a really good physical examination, x-rays or lab work. Um, so we recommend doing twice yearly exams for most pets starting at the age of seven. Um, for a lot of animals, that's not really considered old, but that is the time where these changes can start happening. Um, so we like to be cautious and try to prevent things versus address them once problems start to occur. Now there are certain breeds where twice yearly exams might be recommended by your veterinarian a little bit earlier in life. In particular, those are going to be your giant breeds of dogs because they tend to age a lot faster um, than the smaller breeds. So sometimes we may recommend at age five seeing them twice a year. Um, at the twice a year exam, some certain things that your vet might do would be a good exam. They're going to check the joints and check for arthritis. They're going to palpate the abdomen and check for anything internal that feels like it might be enlarged, like an organ that might be enlarged. They're going to feel all of the skin and the lymph nodes to check for any enlargements or lumps or bumps that could be considered abnormal. Um, the teeth are very important. Sometimes as dogs and cats age, they might start to develop dental disease. Um, and that can really be painful and can affect their quality of life. They're also going to look at the eyes and listen to the heart and the lungs, amongst other things. Um, for some pets, particularly if they're on medications, we might recommend twice yearly lab work um, to monitor the side effects of that medication. For others, um, once a year lab work might be appropriate for your pet. In some cases, um, depending on genetic predispositions or family history, we might recommend x-rays to monitor the heart or to check for problems that might be occurring internally. So just a little tip to uh, help you keep your pets healthy. Um, definitely recommend having them checked out twice a year. Um, the earlier we can prevent problems, uh, the better we can keep them with you for a long, healthy, happy lives. Thanks so much for Dr. Beatty for helping to explain the importance of being able to catch the disease process early, especially in senior dogs. We really appreciate her time. Now that we've covered wellness, we're gonna pop over into cognition, the brain. So it's important to understand that age affects the brain just as, it, just as much as it does the body. The brain breaks down just as the body breaks down. So we're gonna talk about some of the differences that happen and some of the things that you can do to help with their cognitive dysfunction as it is. 
Um, there is such thing called canine cognitive dysfunction, which is kind of similar to dementia or Alzheimer's in people. And it is a breakdown of some of the brain's abilities, to put it in layman's terms. Washington State University determines that up to 85% of senior dogs actually aren't even diagnosed with canine cognitive dysfunction. But it is a neurobehavioral syndrome that's important to understand because their brains are not gonna be the same, they're not gonna be as sharp or as quick or as easy to function as they would be when they were younger dogs. So there are a couple of things that you can do about it. One, there are diets out there that help support brain function. There are also supplements out there that help support brain function. Those are things that you need to talk to your veterinarian about or your nutritionist about to get more information about those. They seem to have a minimal effect and some report better outcomes than others do, but it's something worth trying if you feel like your dog's cognitive functions are starting to fail. The other thing that you can do to help Help encourage your dog's brain capacity and function is continue to engage them mentally continue to provide stimulation for them continue playing with them as much as they can physically playing games like puzzle games with them that helps increase the use of their brain and help, helps keep them a little bit more sharp than they otherwise would be if you just kind of let them deteriorate on their own the most important thing to understand when we're talking about canine cognition, especially in the aging senior brain though, is patience. You have to understand that you might start to notice your dog doing different things that they hadn't otherwise done, like pacing or panting more, licking the floor, forgetting some of the boundaries that you've once laid down in the household that for 10, 11, 12 years of their life, they understood and obeyed. Now things start to change a little bit. Some of these things you can alter and some of these things you cannot. Some of it is a natural process as the brain begins to age and the body begins to age as well. So having a lot of patience and understanding for your dog is gonna be your biggest tool in helping make life a little bit better for them as they age. All right, so in talking about comfort, the next thing that we're gonna discuss is how to make life a little bit more comfortable for your senior dog. Next, we're talking about comfort. As you start to age, things simply just hurt more same goes the case with our senior dogs. Now the difference between dogs and people is that dogs can't tell you what hurts more. Obviously we speak a different language, but dogs are also stoic, meaning that they don't always outwardly express the amount of pain that they're feeling on the inside. This is simply a matter of survivability that dates back to their ancestors that were wild once. So you think about wild animals like wolves and other wild animals, they don't always show what's going on on the outside, even though they're experiencing some sort of pain or sickness. This is so that they don't get killed or picked off by other members of the family. So thinking about their wild genetic roots, we know that our animals, our companion animals, don't always show the pain that they're feeling on the outside. First thing that we're gonna talk about to help provide a little bit more comfort for your dogs are the types of dog beds that you can provide your senior dogs. And you'll see Boda Bear here is laying on one example. So the first one that I'm gonna go over is the one that he's laying on. This is a supportive bed. Sometimes they call them orthopedic beds, but it's really just based on the type of foam material that this dog bed is made out of. It's a little bit more supportive than the super cushy, fluffy pillow beds that we'll look at in just a moment. You can see here over here, I'll give you a little sneak peek at this. One of our younger puppies that we, were, we had here at the house chewed this up. So they're giving you an inside look at this foam. But you'll see it's a nice, thick, kind of dense, supportive material. This really helps their joints so that when they lay down on the bed, they have some support and it kind of evens out uh, their bones, their muscles, and their body on that bed. This will help with things like getting up and getting down. If you have a bed that's too soft or too squishy, squishy, which is kind of this next bed that we're gonna look at right here, then it can be a little bit more difficult for them to actually get up and down because there's just not enough surface to push off of and not enough support. You can see this one here is like a big giant pillow. And though it's nice and soft and squishy and they like to dig and make nice beds out of it, this can be a lot more challenging for senior dogs. So if you have a bed like this, it's a good idea to provide more support by either adding some of the foam layers to it and making it a little bit stiffer on the bottom or just foregoing a bed like this altogether. Keep this one for your younger dogs and give something with a little bit more support and thickness to your older dogs. Now the other thing that you can do too is provide lots of nice thick cushy throw rugs, kind of like this shag carpet that's right here. 
So if they like blankets and they like soft things and they're not as keen on a flat, boring orthopedic bed, something like this is actually suitable as well because it provides that same sense of comfort and digging into the bed and the blanket with the shag and the thickness, but also there's a flat surface underneath with the carpet pad and the floor so that they're able to get up and get down without sliding or losing traction. Okay, so while we're on the topic of the dog beds, I'm gonna talk about providing a safe space for your senior dog. And remember that things just tend to hurt a little bit more. So if you have a very active house or other dogs, children in the household, it's important to provide a safe space where they can get away from all of that action just to rest and recover as needed. So having, if they still use a crate, having their crate open and available to them where no one else goes in and out. If you have a little dog, giving them something up off of the ground that's easy to get onto where no one else bothers them, the other animals and other members of the family understand that when they're in that place, nobody messes with them. So you can use something like soft stairs or a soft ramp to help your little dog get up onto the couch where they can be away from the other animals and take a rest break. Uh, the other thing that you can do is just provide a quiet, calm area in the house in a corner somewhere with one of their dog beds and just label that their safe space where the other animals don't interact with them and other people don't. So when they need to take a break and they need to rest or recover, they know that they can go to that safe place and they can do that. The other thing it's important to be aware of if you have children or other dogs in the household is that um, as dogs age, their roles can change in the household. So for example, even if your older dog kind of made the rules and the younger dogs kind of followed their way, as they age, you might see a shift in kind of those roles to where the younger dog now starts to take over kind of what's happening and determining what steps come next, whereas the senior dog tends to fall in the background. As that happens, you might notice some behaviors in your younger dog, like pushing your senior dog around, running into them from time to time, stealing some of their food. So it's important that you kind of mitigate those behaviors and you teach your younger dogs to have decent spatial relations around your senior animal so that they don't accidentally or inadvertently get hurt. Because remember, they're a little bit achier, they're a little bit creakier, so having a younger dog run into them is going to have a a higher level of discomfort than it would have when they were younger. Same goes with children in the family. It's never good to have children climbing on the dogs or pulling on their ears or tails anyhow, but in particular, senior dogs can be more reactive because it simply just hurts more. So make sure that young children in the household are very gentle with your senior pets. Teach them about why they have different aches and pains and why it's important to also uh, be respectful of their safe place and their feelings. Make sure ha they're handling them very gently, they're petting very gently, and again, they're giving them that space that they need. So the last thing I'll mention about providing comfort for your dog is that sometimes you need some medical intervention. As they get old and stiff, things like arthritis and joint inflammation can set in. So if you notice that your dog is very uncomfortable or starts to experience some of these things that are causing them to really have difficult time going up and down stairs or getting up and down out of their bed or off of the floor, talk with your veterinarian. Oftentimes they can prescribe pain medications or anti-inflammatories that can help your senior dog just kind of take that pain edge off and feel more more comfortable, but that's something that you definitely need to discuss with your veterinarian. There's nothing wrong with pain management in any way that you can make them feel more comfortable in their final years, the better for them. Now that we've covered comfort, we're going to talk a little bit about mobility, because when your dog is comfortable, they move better. So let's talk about some things that we can do in the house to make mobility easier and safer for your senior dog. Next, we're gonna talk about mobility. Now, as we mentioned before, it's a little bit harder for senior dogs to move. They just don't get up and down nearly as easy. The problem with that is that it makes them a little bit more inclined for injury. So we're gonna talk about a few things that can help avoid potential injuries just as things get harder for them to move. Just a few simple things you can do throughout the house to make their mobility much easier. Now before we do, please remember that if you like this kind of video and you find value in it, please hit that like button and the subscribe button. It really helps me understand the content that you find value in, so I'll continue to make videos that you like. Okay, let's start with mats. So down here on the floor, I have a simple bath mat. So you can use something like this, a bath mat, or you can even use carpet square samples that you can get from the carpet store. The important factor is that the bottom has a no slip surface to it right here and the top is soft, but it's not super soft and pillow like, so it's firm that they can actually move and get up. The no slip surface bottom is important so that this doesn't slide as they get up. If you have a blanket on the floor, it's very slip, 
slick and they can lose their footing and lose their balance and that can cause injury. So we're looking for things that will help prevent injury, no slip surfaces. So you'll notice here is my carpet, then I have a very slick hardwood surface and then over there another carpeted surface which is over in the stairwell. What I want to do for a senior dog that's having difficulty getting up and with mobility is provide some in-between surfaces that are much easier for them to grasp. So in this area, ideally, I would provide two or three of these little carpet squares or bath mats or a runner rug to get them from the area that's easy to stand on to the area of very difficult traction for them. So they're less likely to slide and slip on this hardwood floor. The bath mats are great to use anywhere throughout the house if you have hardwood floors. Same with the carpet squares if you want to do something that's a little bit more fashionable and matches throughout the house. But it's important to cover up some of the areas of hardwoods in between so that they can get better traction and then they're a lot less likely to slip and fall and hurt themselves. Okay, another thing that you can do in the household is purchase booties. Now, these little booties here, for example, are often used for outdoor wear for younger dogs. The reason that they use these outside is because if you have hot asphalt or pavement or very cold surfaces or things that could potentially harm their paws, this helps protect the paws. But the other great thing about these is that you can use them in the house as well. You'll notice that on the paw part down here, this is also no slip. This is very grippy. So where their nails or just their imbalance might cause them to slide on a hardwood floor, these help create some traction so that they can avoid slipping and falling and injuring themselves on the hardwoods. These come four to a set, you'll see here. Front paws and back paws, and when fastened appropriately, they stay on fairly well. Now you will want to condition your dog positively to this, so introducing them to them, giving them treats and rewards while you put one on at a time, and just practicing with them on, sh on their feet for short periods of time so that they can get used to them and it doesn't frighten them or it doesn't feel weird to them. You might notice the first couple of times that they use them, they high step like a horse, but remember, it's something new and something different that they have to get used to. But just having booties on in the household, especially if you have hardwood floors, can severely reduce reduce the likelihood that they will slip and fall and injure themselves. These are a great tool if you can get your dog accustomed to them and you have hardwood floors. So let's talk about nails just for a brief moment. Now the importance of talking about nails is to understand that as dogs age and they grow and their nails continue to grow, if they curl around or they're much longer than their pads here, you can see this one's right at kind of the level of of Boda Bear's pad is that it can make it more difficult for them to walk and make it more painful on their feet as they push down and against surfaces. The other thing too is that the nail surface is slippery. So if you have hardwood floors, it can cause them to slide. So it's really important that you keep their nails trimmed and nice and tidy. It's easiest if you use a Dremel tool to kind of round out those hard surfaces and make it a lot more blunt so they're less likely to slide and slip and fall. Nail care in senior pets is very, very important so that they're less likely to injure themselves. So make sure that you keep them nice and tight and short and rounded. Okay, so mobility, just like comfort and wellness and cognition, all boil down to one important factor for your dog, and that's really quality of life. They only have so much time left with you and you really wanna make the best of it. So I hope that you picked up a couple of tips today that really help make life a little bit easier for your senior pet. <music>